Hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about getting people outside safely and responsibly. I have been camping, backpacking, hiking, and otherwise enjoying the outdoors my entire life, and I love sharing that with you. So let's talk a little bit about backpacking quilts, which seem to be all the rage these days. What exactly is a backpacking quilt? It's similar to a sleeping bag, except there's no back to it and there's no hood. A lot of ultralight backpackers have already made the switch to backpacking quilts, and while I'm not an ultralighter. I chose to get one, well I got two, uh, for all the benefits of having a quilt and they're lighter, they leave more room in my pack for other comforts. Even if you're new to camping or backpacking, you're probably already familiar with a sleeping bag. It's going to have you completely enclosed with a zipper down the side. If it's one that's designed for backpacking, it's probably going to be wider in the shoulders, narrow down at the feet, and have a hood, and that design is called a mummy bag. Sleeping bags have been around for about 150 years, but in the 1990s, people started experimenting with making themselves quilts. There is not really any benefit to the insulation that's underneath you because your body is crushing it, and it's the air that gets trapped in that insulation that's actually what keeps you warm. So when you're laying on it, it really doesn't do you any good. So people started experimenting with not having that, and that would make things lighter and less bulky among other benefits. The insulation that you do benefit from is actually from your sleeping pad. And I have information about that right up here to help you figure out what's right for you in that regard. So why wouldn't you just open up a sleeping bag if you're thinking about a quilt? Well, for me personally, that was actually kind of how I tested to see if I would even like a quilt. However, the hood was in the way and the way the foot box is designed, it's not really designed to be used that way. Plus, you still don't have the benefit of the bulk and the weight and you can't really strap it to your pad the way that you can with quilts. Now, if a mummy bag isn't for you, you could always try a rectangular bag. However, you're more likely to have your feet be cold because there's so much more open space there. And a quilt is going to have that narrow foot box the way that a mummy bag will. However, you still have room to spread out. Just like a sleeping bag, quilts are going to have temperature ratings. Now, we all sleep differently, and women in general tend to sleep colder than men. And even, of course, within that, there are individual results. For example, mountain goat sleeps a lot colder than I do. I have used my zero degree here down to about 12 degrees so far. I haven't tested it any colder than that, but I've used this down to 12 degrees comfortably. If you're going into temperatures below about zero degrees Fahrenheit, you're probably gonna wanna be enclosed in a sleeping bag and you're gonna want, not want all the air gaps that can come with having a quilt. But really anything much above that, you're probably gonna be happy with a quilt. But of course we are all different, do what works for you. So let's chat about some of the benefits of having a quilt. They tend to be a lot more comfortable if you toss and turn or you tend to spread out in your sleep like a lot of us do. It is significantly more versatile than having a sleeping bag. If it's warm out, you can leave it unstrapped. You can easily stick a leg out. You don't have to completely unzip your sleeping bag to keep a leg out. If it's cold, you can snap it up around your neck. You can cinch it down. Depending on the design, you can potentially even open up the foot box, like with this one, and spread it out open which I never do, I don't like it. <laughs> to keep it warmer, you can use the straps and cinch the top of it down around your neck. And I found that there, it doesn't 100% eliminate drafts, but it does reduce them significantly and I stay plenty warm with this. It can take some practice to figure out how to turn around in your quilt without necessarily lifting it up and opening it up to those drafts, but it does yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> you can customize them quite a bit. And so, for example, like you can obviously see the different colors of these ones. These are two, this is my zero degree, this is my 30 degree. My zero degree has an enclosed sewn foot box where my 30 degree has a zippered foot box. You can choose the stuffing, you can choose the width, you can choose the length, you can choose the material. You can choose if it has a pattern, you can choose if it has pad straps, you can choose like, I mean, there's so many different ways to make this customizable for what works best for you. The temperature ratings on these also tend to be more comfort rated, more so than a sleeping bag. But of course, 
your results may vary. For example, my Nemo Disco is rated 15 degrees and it's comfortable down to about 42 for me, whereas my 30 degree quilt here is comfortable down to about 38 degrees. So take from that what you will. Just make sure you do your research because not all brands are created equally. I also love not having to deal with a zipper when I want to get in and out, especially when I really have to go pee in the middle of the night or in the morning. And then when I'm trying to get back in, if I have it clipped, I can just unclip the two clips, open it up, clip right back in, or even just unclip one of them and sleep, slip myself in and out over the bottom one. So what are the downsides of a quilt? One, they're simply harder to find because sleeping bags are so much more mainstream. People who are getting into camping and backpacking are much more familiar with those. They don't know what to expect with a quilt. So stores carry a gazillion more sleeping bags than they do quilts. And to that end, a lot of the bigger brands don't yet make a lot of quilts. Some of them might have one or two, but not really like a good variety to appeal to a broader audience. If you do order a custom one, it can take several weeks or even months. So you have to have the time to wait. Some people really don't like sleeping directly on their sleeping pad. And in the summer uh, where you may not be wearing, you know, base layers to bed. And when, if you are, then uh, it's not as big of a deal because your skin isn't directly on the sleeping pad. But if you are sleeping naked or in very little clothing, then you're going to stick to your pad potentially. Some of the fixes for this are getting a sleeping pad sheet or cover or even using a sleeping bag liner and putting your sleeping pad inside of that kind of like a big sock. Um, some people sleep inside the sleeping bag liners, which um, it sounds like awful to me. I hate using one. So it's like it completely would negate the benefits of using a quilt for me. But I'm definitely going to be trying this year. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to try this year using a sleeping bag liner to put my sleeping pad into so that I don't stick to it. Let's see how it goes. Also compared to a sleeping bag, which can simply be laid out and ready to go, a quilt can take a little bit more practice and it takes a little bit more learning and assembly. If you're going to use the pad straps, it certainly takes more than just laying it out. Now, if you want to learn how to use pad straps, then be sure to click on this video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.